No matter where we look online, we're met with a consistent message that merging sales in Excel is bad. Instead, we should use center across selection. In fact, my friend Richard Sumner from Spreadsheet Solutions, he posted about this recently on LinkedIn. And of course, he got lots of replies stating that merging sales is bad. But here's the thing, sometimes merging sales is the only way because center across selection just doesn't hack it. So in this video, we're looking at three scenarios where we will use and have to use merge cells because it's the best option for us. So if you're ready, let's get started. So for this video, let's start by looking at the problem that merged cells cause. Here we have some data in a table for Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 and total. This all relates to one year, which is 2023. So therefore we have created a merged cell. We do that by in the home ribbon, clicking merge and center. Now the problem comes when we want to select a single column from that data set. So I click here in cell D1. And when I drag the mouse down, you'll see that that now expands to include that entire merged range, which means that when I drag down, I can't select the values which are in column D. In fact, even if I take column D and drag that column somewhere else, we get this error message. We can't do that to a merged cell. This is just one example of the type of errors we might get with a merged cell. So what the advice is, that rather than using merge and center, so we don't want that option, instead what we want to do is to select all of those cells. I'll press control one. That brings up the format cells dialog box. And then under the alignment, we have horizontal and the option for center across selection. I'll select that and click okay. Now we don't have that same issue. If I want to, I can click column D and I can drag that anywhere else I like, and it doesn't cause us any error messages. Because center across selection doesn't give us those error messages, it's easy to think that we should always use that rather than merged cells. Well, we're going to look at three scenarios where we can't use center across selection, and therefore merged cells are the only way to go. So that being said, let's go and start on our first scenario. Here in this example, you can see that we have two sections. The first section is for merge cells, and then the second section is for center across selection. The data inside each of these is identical. The only difference is that here, from cell C3 to G3, and also here from H3 to L3, we have a merged cell. When instead in the center across selection section, we don't have a merged cell, so it looks identical. Now the problem comes when we try and group our cells. So I'll select columns C to F. From the data ribbon, I can come to the group section and add a group. I'll do the same with 2024. Now this is great because it means that although we have a breakdown of Q1 to Q4 and a total, we can group those items and just show those total values. This is great. It means we give users the option to view all of that data or they can hide it and just see the most important information. But there's a big difference here. You'll notice for the merged cells, it retains that merged cell value and displays it in G3 and L3. But for center across selection, it doesn't. So in this scenario, merged cells is a better option. For our second scenario, let's suggest that we have this table and we want to publish this table in a report. Now the issue we have is that the reference number, well, all of those are very similar. It's difficult to see when those reference numbers change. Now we can't use a center across selection because that only works if we're centering across. So therefore that has to be across columns. In this scenario, we're centering between rows. So I can select that. I'm going to apply merge and center, but we want to keep that in the left and also top alignment. So that's another scenario where we may decide to format our data so that it has merged cells. So let's just do this final one. And there we go. That is now much easier to read than it was initially. 
For our third scenario, we're looking at another report. This report has two sections. The first section is by an item, for example, and then the second section might be by region. The problem is that we have a lot of white space. See here columns F, G and H, it's white space. And here in the status column, there's a lot of white space to the left. And the problem here is that Excel has a grid structure. So column E has to have the same width all the way down that column. Comment, because it has text, will be quite a wide column, but status only has a single number. It can be a narrow column. So the way that we can get around this is if we use a small matrix. What that means is that we create a grid structure and we have lots of columns all the way across the top which have a narrow width. We can then combine these columns together to create a single area. So you can see there that value, overdue and comment are set to be the same size as value, units, status, quality and the pass percentage. So therefore we take a report that looks like this and convert it into a report that looks like this. This is only possible because we've used merged cells. Let's take quality for an example. That number there is 79. It is a merged cell. Let's unmerge that cell. So we have 79, it's there, but it's shown by two hash symbols. I'll select that area. I'll press control one to bring up the format cells and then I'll center across selection and then click OK. That looks fine as long as we want our column to be centered. But we don't want our column centered. These are numbers, so therefore we want to stack them with right alignment. So what we're going to do is to select the area. We're going to right align it and therefore that then puts it back into that first cell. Therefore, if we want to use a small matrix so that we can have flexibility over how our reports are displayed, then we need to use merged cells. And therefore that gives us the ability to align those cells however we like. Now, you might have noticed a common theme among those three scenarios. Those three scenarios were all about presentation. It wasn't about data, it wasn't about calculation, it was about presentation. If you use a merged cell in data, you've got a problem. If you use merged cells in calculations, you've got a problem. However, when it comes to presentation, the most important thing is how it looks. Therefore, merging cells are often the best option that we have. Sure, use center across selection if you can. That is a good option to reduce the number of errors that you might encounter but there's still use cases for merged cells when we really want to get our presentation just right. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.